Good evening. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, I warmly welcome you this evening to Central United Methodist Church, which is located on the corner of Pacific Avenue in Fulton in Stockton, California. I am Alan Cook, Director of Family Ministries. Joining me this evening is our pastor, Jan Everhart Hartliff. Our service will include candle lighting. We hope you will join us in lighting a candle in your home. If you don't have a candle in front of you, take a moment to find a candle by pausing the service and locating a candle. So please sit, remain silent, weep, or even pace as you feel the need throughout this service. There are people here who will sustain you with their singing, praying, and healing love. On this shortest day of the year, and as we head into the longest night of the year, we gather mindful of the losses that have multiplied throughout the year. As we look back at it all at once, we are in danger of being overwhelmed by the tragedies, sickness, violence, wildfires, hurricanes, earthquakes, and more. Our aim tonight is to acknowledge this to mourn and to know that in all of this hurt and suffering there is the possibility and promise of more light. It might be just a glimmer, a flicker, but it is there. Some of the earliest evidence is that our ancestors saw this night and the dawn of tomorrow as the appropriate time to honor their lost loved ones. It was this moment that symbolized most powerfully that the path to everlasting life is filled with the light of a new and growing dream. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort us in our afflictions. Enter into our hearts, heal and restore us. Where we are hurting, comfort us. And where we are experiencing sorrow, show us compassion. Bless us in the night that we may see your light dawning upon us. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you.
Please join me in the litany of losses. We mourn this night the loss of life. For so many, the pandemic has taken loved ones. We mourn the loss of those close to us and those whose names we do not know. We mourn those who perished while working to save others' lives. We mourn those who died, not of the pandemic, but of other causes. And we mourn the loss, in many cases, of our ability to be with them as they passed. Our loss of gathering together for comfort in the ways we need so much. And I invite you to repeat after me. We mourn this loss of life. We mourn this loss of life. We honor and remember these beloveds. We honor and remember these beloveds. We pray for comfort and peace. We pray for comfort and peace. Amen. For so many, the pandemic has stolen the security of food, shelter, care for families, and medical care. We mourn the loss of businesses that could not withstand these circumstances. These were not just businesses, but dreams born of passion and hard work. We mourn those who find themselves needing to rely on others for help when what they really want to do is to be able to help others. I invite you to repeat after me. We mourn the loss of livelihood. We mourn the loss of livelihood. We honor and remember the dreams now deferred. We honor and remember the dreams now deferred. We pray for sustenance and resilience. We pray for sustenance and resilience. Amen. Amen.
our society's dilemma, centuries in the making, has created hatred, suffering, oppression, and ill will. We mourn the loss of those whose lives were lost to brutality and violence. We mourn the loss of our ability to love one another despite our differences as beings who deserve to be seen for their inherent beauty and worth. We mourn the black and brown people have perished and suffered the greatest proportion in the pandemic of coronavirus. We mourn the pandemic of racism that still plagues the fabric of our communities. I invite you to repeat after me. We mourn the loss of love. We mourn the loss of love. We honor and remember the work of prophets who proclaim justice. We honor and remember the work of prophets who proclaim justice. We pray for compassion and change. We pray for compassion and change. Amen.
just as we will do later this week on Christmas Eve. We light this as a sign of our belief. We believe that light that we believe the light that has come and is coming. The light casts its glow on all the surrounding prayers we have prayed. This light resides with us, besides dim, perhaps dim for a time, but always lit, an ember of the holy inside us. This light reminds us that we are not alone. We invite you to light your own candle at home as we light candles here in this sacred space. Heaven's perfect lamb And 
the sleeping child you're holding is the great I been done has been done what has not been done has not been done let it be the night is quiet let the quietness of your peace enfold us all dear to us and all who have no peace the night heralds the dawn let us look expectantly to a new day new joys new possibilities Blessing for the Longest Night by Jan Richardson All throughout these months, as the shadows have lengthened, this blessing has been gathering in itself, making ready, preparing for this night. It has practiced walking in the dark, traveling with its eyes closed, feeling its way by memory, by touch, by the pull of the moon, even as it wanes. So believe me when I tell you, this blessing will reach you even if you have not light enough to read it. It will find you even though you cannot see it coming. You will know the moment of its arriving by your release of the breath you have held so long as a loosening of the clenching in your hands of the clutch around your heart, a thinning of the darkness that had drawn itself around you. This blessing does not mean to take the night away, but it knows its hidden roads, knows the resting spots along the path, knows what it means to travel in the company of a friend. So when this blessing comes, take its hand, get up, set out upon the road you cannot see. This is the night when you can trust that any direction you go, you will be walking toward the dawn. 